In this video, I'm talking about Zapier and Make.com and how you can decide on what automation platform is best for your business. I'll talk about pricing, user interface, and the overall experience, the functionality of both platforms and which one is easier, their customer support, and make sure to stick around till the end and I'll tell you which platform I like best. Now, my name is Stephen Pope, founder of The Content Engine, and over the past two years, I've helped hundreds of personal brands and content agencies automate and streamline their content systems overnight. Now, first, let's get into pricing both platforms offer a free plan. Here I'm looking at the pricing for Zapier. So you can get into either one of these platforms for $0, but you're really only going to get a 100 tasks on Zapier. And with make.com, you'll be limited to a 1000 operations. Zapier calls them tasks and make.com calls them operations. Now when it comes to tasks on Zapier, lots of things don't actually count as a task. So they give you lots of different things that you can do that don't actually count towards your tasks. With make.com, pretty much anytime you have one of these nodes here, it is going to count as an operation. Now, having said that, make.com is still a lot cheaper because for the money that you pay, you get a lot more operations on make.com than you will in Zapier. I'll talk more about make in a second, but here their core plan for $9 a month, you get 10,000 operations and Zapier's cheapest plan, their professional is $20 a month and you only get 750 tasks. Now, if you're just starting out and you're doing something simple like a lead form on Zapier, you probably won't use up all of these tasks. So this is pretty nominal in terms of how much you pay. But if you do anything complicated in Zapier, I actually built an app that easily gets into the 20,000 range and I have clients that do 50,000. And when you look at that, we're talking about $289 a month. And on a yearly basis, that's almost $3,500. And if we jump over to make.com and we look at how many operations it costs to have an equivalent, they don't actually have 50,000, but if we look at their 40,000, it's only $29 a month. So it's literally 10 times cheaper than Zapier. And then if if you jump up to 80,000 operations, it's still only $55 a month. Now, both plans also have tiers. We have core, pro, and teams, and Zapier also has professional and teams, but for the most part, you can stick with professional. With make.com, you might actually need to upgrade to different tiers based off of the different things that you need down here. And if you scroll down on their pricing page, it will give you more details. The main thing that I use in terms of additional resources when I go through the different tiers is how big of a file that you can process when you are using automations with make.com. So when you build an automation and you're working with files and you're downloading files or processing files, you need to make sure you get a plan that can handle the file size that you're working with and the maximum file size that you can actually work with on any plan is a thousand megabytes. So now let's talk a little bit about the user interface and the experience of working in both of the different applications. I'm in Zapier right now and I'm looking at an automation and you can see that it's a very straightforward process to build out an automation. We have step number one, step number two, two and step number three and step number four. And so what you see, it's a very linear and simple approach. We have one zap that leads into the next and it's very easy to understand what's happening. If you click into a step, then it's going to show you the information about that step on the right. And then in each step, you'll be able to build on the previous and you'll be able to use any information that came from the previous step. So you can see here, I have a zap here that's uploading a file to Google Drive and it's using information that we passed in from the webhook in step number one and so on. If I go into step number three, you can see I'm using information that was given in step number two. And then in step number four, I'm updating a row in Airtable and it's using information that came from step number two and step number three. So you can see it's a very simple and straightforward user interface and it's great for beginners. I still like the interface myself. Now, when you jump into make.com, you're gonna find that it's a lot more visual and you can really see the flow. And so you'll see these more dynamic automations and flows that have multiple branches. It's quite common to see this in make.com. This is a router that lets you build out different branches to different automations. Now branches are possible in Zapier. You can create a similar functionality. They are called paths. You can see them here. And what you're going to see is it looks something like this where it's branching off, but it's definitely not as intuitive as it is in make.com. And it's definitely not as simple to implement. You can only have a path as the last step in your automation. So if you have a situation like this, where you need multiple routers in order to make multiple multiple branches throughout your automation. Doing that in Zapier isn't gonna work as nicely. As well as you can see, if you start to have multiple paths, let's say you have four or five or six, it starts to get a little overwhelming in terms of how this looks and how it's managed. But in make.com, this is actually quite simple to do. You can add multiple branches and it becomes quite easy to manage. And they also have this cool button here that auto aligns everything. Once things get a little bit messy, you can always hit this button here and everything 
just gets built out again for you. Now, the next major thing to consider when you're signing up for either one of these two platforms is what other applications do they support? Can you connect to Google Sheets? Can you connect to your Google Calendar? Can you connect to Gmail, Slack? So with both of these platforms, you can go to their website and search all of the different platforms that they connect to. Quite honestly, nowadays, I'm starting to see that both platforms are starting to have an equal amount of applications that they support. Every now and again, I'll come across one that only Zapier supports, and then other days I'll come across one that only make.com supports. But both of these platforms are racing to add as many different integrations as possible so that you can automate as much of your business as possible with each of these different platforms. And irregardless, if you ever run into a situation where one of the platforms doesn't actually have a native integration that makes it super easy to integrate with Twilio or OneDrive, you can always connect directly to an API. It's a little bit more complicated, but if you ever run into that situation, all you have to do is go to the app that you want to connect and you look up their API and you look at how they do it. And then you can just simply make an API call, whatever platform you're using. Here's an HTTP call. You can use that to call an API and then you can really integrate with whatever platform you want as long as the API allows you to connect to it. Now, there is one cool feature in Zapier that I've used a couple times that I don't use that often, but it is pretty cool if you're beginning. You can just type into what you want into their powered AI system here and it will actually build out the automations for you. So I'm just going to try something out here. When a new row comes into Airtable, create a new folder on Google Drive and write that Google Drive folder ID back to Airtable. So let's go ahead and generate this and see what it comes up with. So this is probably just a terminology thing and it got stuck. So let's just use the typical Airtable language when a new record is created. And let's try it again and see what happens. All right, so it looks like it understood what I was trying to say there. So it looks like it was just a terminology thing. So you might run into that, but you can see here that it was able to create the automation for me, a new record. When there's a new record in Airtable, create the folder and then update the record. And then you can just hit try it and then it actually builds it out. Then all you have to do is go through and just fill out the details and your automation will be complete. And so I didn't actually know this before I started writing this video, but it looks like make.com has an equivalent to that as well. So both of these platforms are moving quickly to support AI. Now, when you get into some advanced automations in Zapier, there is another cool feature. They allow you to actually run source code on their platform. So if you type code, you can actually use this Zap here, which allows you to run either JavaScript or Python code, which is really powerful if you you ever run into a situation where one of their automations doesn't do what you need, you can always just code it out. Now you will need developer experience to do so, but that gives you a lot of flexibility when you run into a situation where there isn't some sort of built-in functionality that you need. Now there are equivalents to this in the make.com platform, but they are using external platforms. So you're going to have to sign up for an external platform like zero code kit, and that's going to be an additional fee on top of the pricing for make.com. So the fact that this code zap is built into Zap Zapier is definitely an advantage. Now I haven't played with this, but Zapier also has a few other products called Tables, which is really something that's gonna feel like Airtable. Airtable is like a spreadsheet on steroids. It looks like Zapier is coming up with some of these built-in functionalities so that if you need a table and you need to store data in your automations, you'll be able to do that directly in Zapier without using an external application. I've never used any of these because I love Airtable so much that I've never needed something like this. It doesn't look very complete when it comes to database bases like Airtable is. So I've just never actually tried to use it, but it is cool that they have this built in. I don't think make.com has an equivalent to that tables feature. But again, to me, it's just really not that compelling because I use Airtable and it's a much better platform than trying to use this. Zapier also has this interfaces platform, which allows you to create different types of interfaces that you could use if you wanted to create more of like an application, like you could submit tickets and create like a user form that would automatically trigger an automation inside Zapier. But again, I use Airtable for this. It provides a much better user interface than I can build out in Zapier. So it's just something that I never end up actually using. You can also build out chatbots in Zapier. But again, I just wonder with some of these features, are they trying to build things that people don't actually use? All I really want is the ability to create zaps. All of these other features that they are adding are really just weak competitors to things that are external to their system and can be replaced in a much better way. Now, when it comes to getting help on either Zapier 
Zapier or Make.com both have a search and documentation that you can go through. With Zapier, you are able to contact support. You can also use their chat and try to message them directly. With Zapier, it's a bit hit or miss. Sometimes I get good, quick responses, other times not. And I really don't know what the rhyme or reason to that is, but sometimes I just get the sense that Zapier is a big company and they just have a lot of support requests to take care of. Now, when it comes to getting support on make.com, to be honest with you, I don't really know how the support is. I've only used it once. I got an answer to what I needed, but I really haven't needed to reach out to support very often, which I think is a credit to their service. I'm able to figure everything out on my own and I really never have any sort of technical issue. Every now and again, I will have a technical issue on Zapier, but make.com pretty much just works and I'm able to figure everything out. And so I really can't give you much of an analysis in terms of how their actual support functions. Now, when it comes to myself and which platform I prefer, I really prefer make.com a lot more. It is a much more sophisticated application. I mean, just when you see how their interface looks, it's obviously a lot more modern and it's just easy to see what's going on, especially when you start to build out more complex automations and you have lots of different paths and routes. When it comes to handling errors and building out error handlers, you have a lot of flexibility on how you handle the different errors. So you can build out much more complex things and handle things in a much more nuanced way than you can in Zapier. I really feel that Zapier is just an older platform and they just have a lot of legacy interfaces that they just have to keep going. And it's really just hard to build an app from scratch. Make.com is a lot newer. So when they built it out, they were just able to take advantage of the latest browser technology to build something that's just a lot more intuitive and flexible and just something that we're used to in the modern age. This is just kind of clunky. And when you see paths, that's just a result of having all of that infrastructure that was built out years and years ago. Anytime they try to add something new, they're fighting all of the infrastructure that they built, you know, five or 10 years ago. Whereas make.com was really able to take advantage of all of the learnings that other platforms had already created when they first started to get going. But having said that, I still use both platforms. There are times when there's just an app that is available on one that is not available on the other. So I'll just use that. And then there's just little loopholes that make it more advantageous to use one platform over another. Remember in make.com, I told you they limit the size of the files you're able to process depending on the plan. And ultimately you're limited by a thousand megabytes in terms of how large a file you can process. And I personally process a lot of media files. And so going over a thousand megabytes is quite easy. So if I were to only use make.com, I would just be blocked in terms of doing a lot of the things I need to do. But Zapier actually has a backdoor in terms of how they allow you to upload files to Google Drive. They actually have this Zapier that allows you to upload files to Google Drive. And I'm able to upload files that are 20 gigabytes. You are really only limited by how long it takes for that file to upload. I think the limit is three minutes. So as long as your file processing is under three minutes, there's no limit to the size of the file. However, you can see here that they've marked this module as a legacy module. That means at some point they are going to remove it and replace it with another upload file to Google Drive. And I believe their plan is, is to close that loophole so that you can't upload a large file. I already have a workaround to it, so I'm not too worried about it, but you can kind of see how this game is played. Both of these different platforms have slightly different limitations and you kind of have to work with multiple platforms sometimes to get everything that you need done. So there you go. I hope you found this video valuable. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It tells me what type of content you want more of. And if you want to see some really cool make.com automations that I do with Airtable to 10x your content, make sure to check out the next video that's popping up on your screen and I'll see you there.